Okay, then. Uh, so last time we look at Levin's theorem. Okay, so uh, Levin's theorem, which says that bounded tiling problem is MP complete. So we uh, <clears throat> reduce a polynomial time bounded non-deterministic Turing machine to bounded tiling. Um, so in other words, we're going to use tiles, we construct tiles based on a given uh, NTM to simulate a computation history of the uh, non-deterministic Turing machine. So in particular, uh, we know that uh, this, these tiles can be used to simulate a history, computation history of this given Turing machine. And in particular, we have a tiles. Well, let's say this is the, the N by, the, sorry, the uh, P, which is P of length of X. So this P is a polynomial, which is strictly greater than the polynomial time bound of the Turing machine. So we know that we can simulate, we use tiles to simulate a computation history and at certain point, we know that a halting state will, uh, will appear. So we have two halting states, one is HA, HA. The other one H A is H R. So when we, if we reach H A here, so let's say the symbol is B, then this tile can be duplicate, can be dupli duplicated up, and so the other tiles, so, and so the other tiles also, because now they don't have a state. We have a, we have a we have a tile that can always duplicate up. So that means that we can cover the entire square, even only if, I'm sorry, when, okay, when HA is, uh, is reached, then we can cover the entire square. And if HR is reached, then we don't have a tile that can duplicate itself up. So that means that when you, when HR, appears because that appears is le strictly less than this many steps. So that will be somewhere here. And then we just got stuck there. So that means that we have no way to cover the entire square. So that, uh, that means that um, this Turing machine we are simulating accepts input X if and only if the, uh, the, the bounded tiling can cover the entire square. Okay, so that is a that is the proof here. So as we said that um, we want to look at more MP complete problems. So the next one we're going to look at is called Koch's theorem. So that says that the satisfiability problem for Boolean formulas in uh, conjunctive normal form is MP complete. So we are going to reduce bounded tiling to SAT. Okay, so uh, the proof I'm gonna give here is different from the proof uh, in your textbook. And uh, the proof I present, I'm gonna present, it will, will be much simpler. Okay, so now let's look at. Let's look at. The next proof. Okay, so we look at Boolean satisfiability or SAT. We consider Boolean formulas in conjunctive normal form. What that means here is that um, 
we know that each Boolean formula would contain, would, would have several, several uh, form, uh, I'm sorry, variables. So we call them Boolean variables. Okay, let's say we have N variables and then uh, for each variable, we could use the variable itself or use a negation of the variable. And then we call those a literal. literal. So a literal is either a variable xi or a negation xi. Okay, so that is called a literal. And then we use uh, disjunction to connect several literals. So then we have this concept called clause. So which is just a disjunction of several literals. Okay, so we can say, uh, the, let's say the J's clause will be Let's say we have J1 disjunction J2 disjunction up to, let's say, J, uh, let's say JK. Okay, so that is a cross. And then we, so this formula. Let's, let's say this formula has a set of clauses, and then we conjoin. Uh, we have a construction of these clauses. Okay, so that means that F would be C one conjunction, C two conjunction. Let's say we have an M. So can conjunction CM. And for uh, convenience, this conjunction can be, think, can be thought of as a product. Okay, so that means uh, if we treat each ver variable uh, as a binary variable, so you can have zero means false, one means true, then this can just be thought of as a product of uh, these values. Okay, so, so hence we can write this as product. So this is the product C i i from one to m. Okay, so this is no, this is the notation. Okay, and then CI uh, can be written as, now this disjunction can be thought of a, a number addition because now we have these value zeros and one, zero for false, one for true, right? So then this CI will just be equal to, uh, let's call it, uh, uh, literal, so we have literal. Okay, Li, let's say JK and K from one to JI. Okay, so that's what this form means. So for instance, uh, if we, if I have, Let's say we have three variables. So that means when n is equal to three, we could have, for instance, x1 or x2, but this all we can just use plus to represent it. So let me use plus. Or plus x three and then times maybe x1 bar plus x2 plus x3 bar, right? So this is a 
con conjunctive normal form, which is equal to x1 or x2 or x3 and x1 bar or x2 or x3 bar. Okay, so, so that's what uh, conjunctive normal form means. So now from now on, we are going to only look at Boolean formula in this conjunctive normal form. We can use the Morgan law to convert any Boolean formula into this form. So, so by looking at this form will make things a little easier and they are equivalent to any body, uh, Boolean form. So any Boolean formula can be converted, can be converted to a uh, conjunctive normal form. Okay, so using the Morgan's law. So now let's look at uh, this Boolean satisfiability problem. So the instance here is a Boolean formula. Well, now let's call it phi in conjunctive normal form, okay? So this mean, when we see this, uh, in our mind, we should, so we should think of it as that it is in this particular form. When you have a F, it's just any Boolean formula in any form. So what we want to know here is that whether phi is satisfiable. So this is a decision problem and we know that SAT is in MP because you can, pre you can present a choose assignment, then I can verify whether that choose assignment will lead, will, will be evaluate, will evaluate this formula to true, right? So that is easy to, to verify. So then we are going to put all the positive instances into a set called SAT, okay? So then we are gonna show that SAT is MP complete. And that is first published in 1972. Okay, so that's, uh, that was a long time ago. And Levin's theorem was published in 1974. Uh, they, they, uh, so Levin and Cook, they work on this problem separately, okay? Independently, separately. One was in Canada, the other one, uh, Cook was in Canada and Levin was in uh, uh, Russia, okay? Uh, Soviet Union at that time, okay? And so now let's look at uh, Cook's theorem. Okay, so uh, uh, Stephen, Cook, right? So he was in Toronto. So what we are going to do is to reduce boundary time to SAT. So then the idea here is that we are going to represent legal tile, represent legal tiling using a Boolean formula in conjunctive normal form. So the idea is to represent legal tiling using a conjunctive normal form formula. Okay, so what do we need to do? So first of all, we need um, to represent, we use a formula to represent the initial, uh, initial sequence of tiles, and then we're going to represent, um, for each tile, we can say, okay, for two tiles, we can put one tile on top of it or, and, or put it on the right of it, right? So, so we need to represent all these uh, possible tiling using a Boolean formula. And then we are going to say that for each tile, we must have at least one, I'm sorry, for each cell, we must have a, 
at least one tile covers it and also at most one tile covers it. So that means exactly one tile. So after that, then we are going to show if a uh, instance of boundary tiling is positive if and only if this uh, Boolean formula we use to represent this legal tiling is positive. So that's the uh, idea of the reduction. So now let's look at uh, the detail. Okay, by the way, Cook was awarded a uh, Turing Award because of this work. Okay, so that was considered a tremendous achievement in computer science because uh, for a long time, uh, people were puzzled why there were so many problems in practice their efforts to find polynomial time algorithms fail. So until then, nobody knows why. And so, uh, and when we have an NP-complete problems, then we know that uh, there are simply certain problems that would be the hardest problem and, and uh, uh, that sort of explained why that uh, people's effort fail. However, as I said, until today, we still don't know whether P is actually equal to NP, even though most people believe that P is not equal to NP. But there isn't proof, there isn't any proof for that. Okay, so, so as uh, theoret theoretically, it could go either way, either P is equal to NP, or P is not equal to NP. Okay, so now, but anyway, so we still uh, want to look at this theorem and this theorem, uh, sorry, this theory, right? The NP com complexity theory was one of the main reasons that that makes computer science a science discipline. Otherwise, it would just be uh, engineering engineering discipline okay so now we have computer science not computer engineering because we have all these problems at hand there's a scientific problems not engineering problem okay so that's how important these things are so now let's look at uh, details uh, the construction in details so that means now we are going to look at an instance of boundary tiling that's called it T S zero to the N. So T is a set of tile types, it's a finite set. S is the initial sequence of tiles that match each other horizontally. And then zero to the N just represents a, is a unitary notion, uh, notation that represents integer N. So that is a bounded there is an instance. Uh, then we're going to construct a Boolean formula in conjunctive normal form to uh, to represent legal tiling of this instance, and such that this bounded tiling instance is positive if and only if the Boolean formula we are going to construct is positive. So that's how the reduction goes. So first thing we need to come up with a set of variables. So, so we, we need, so we need Boolean. So it's first thing first, right? So we need Boolean formulas, I'm sorry, Boolean variables. Okay, so now how many Boolean variables we need? So we look at this, Okay, it's so n by n square. Okay, so then of course we need Boolean formula to represent uh, each location of the cell, okay, ij. Right, and then we also need uh, 
we also now for each of these cell, uh, we can be it can be covered by a tile. So now since the number of tile is finite, so of course we need a we need a variable to indicate on a particular cell which tile is used. Okay, so so that means now we're going to label these tiles as one, two, up to the the, the length of t. So then what we are going to uh, use here is that we're going to label the different tiles occur in S, okay? As T1 up to TL and TL plus one up to T sub length of T is uh, the tiles not used in the initial sequence. So that means then we're going to have a variable V, I, J, K, meaning that on cell I, J, I have the case tile in it. So that means that this variable is going to be set to one if and only if the, um, uh, the case tile is used or is placed on cell I, J. Okay, so that's, that's what this means, All right? <clears throat> and then we're going to construct a uh, formula in conjunctive normal form. So that is uh, five sub one and five sub two and five sub three. Uh, we, we write it as a product. So that means that we have a three formulas. Now let's see what these because as I said, first we need a formula to represent the initial tile, and then we need a formula to represent uh, legal tiling horizontally and uh, vertically. So this is for the initial tiles, initial sequence of tiles. This is for horizontal and vertical coverage. And this, the last one, is used to represent each tile is exactly covered by one tile. So you make all of them true, then that represents a legal tiles. And uh, um, and that's it. So so in other words, if you can cover the entire entire tile uh, square, then we can set these we can have a choose assignment to make this formula true. Uh, otherwise, and that choose assignment will make it false, right? So that is the reduction. So once we understand this, the rest of it, we can construct the rest of it uh, uh, pretty easily, I'll say. So now let's see the construction. Okay, so the first part, phi one is, phi sub one is going to represent the initial sequence of tiles. So let the initial sequence of tiles be S1 up to Sm. And we assume that Sj is Tkj. So that is the label of a tile. Here J is from one to M. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is that, okay, so, so this will be beginning, we begin from the lower left corner and this first cell is one, one. The second is one, two. Okay, so then we have this one J. So, so on this, for each of this, this is covered by T1. So T1 is here and T2 is here. And this is a TKJ is there. So that means now we just, so we want, so to represent this, uh, we just want each of these variable to be true. So, so that means that we just, 
do a product of all these variables or conjunction of these variables. So this is uh, pretty straightforward. So that means that phi sub one is equal to one is evaluated true if and only if the J's cell in the bottom row is covered by TKJ that represents the initial sequence of times that match each other horizontally. So the next one we're going to do is construct phi two. Phi two, as I said, is going to represent legal timing horizontally and vertically. So then we, we break this into two sub formulas. So one represents horizontal uh, legal timing. The other one represents vertical. So horizontal means that, uh, so, so for this tile can be placed on, on, the, on the right of it. So that means that we are going to use, we, we are going to examine all the tiles and then put that these tiles into HT if this tile can be placed on the right of this, okay? So likewise here is VT. So that means that uh, I, can, I can place a tile. So this is, let's call this TK. This is TK prime. So, and this is TK, this is TK prime. So all of these, as long as they can be placed next to each other, I'm gonna put into HT, is horizontal, and this is vertical. And we're gonna put it into VT. So that means that uh, we are gonna say here is that if they are not in HT, then they cannot. Be. So if TK and TK prime is not in HT, they, then they cannot be placed in it. They cannot both be placed in it. One of those could be placed in it, but not both. So that means that we want, uh, if you have two to play, so if, if TK, TK prime is not in HT, so they are not, they cannot be placed but, uh, horizontally next to each other, then we can only place TK exclusive or TK prime in those places. They can, you cannot put both of them. So that means they are, if you put both of them, you have to take a negation. But then we use a variable to represent. So that means now we are gonna put this as a variable. What that means is negation of V I J K and times V I J plus one K prime. Okay, so that becomes this. So, so for all of them, it has to satisfy this uh, condition. So that means that for all such pairs that's not in HT, you cannot place both of them uh, for any I and J. Okay, so that I is from one to N, J is from one to N minus one. So that's for horizontal, for vertical is similar. Okay, so that, so the, uh, so on top of it, if it's I, J, K, and then the, the one beneath, below is J, I'm sorry, I plus one, J, K prime. So then again, you for all I and J. So that means uh, if both of these are true, that means phi two is true if and only if the adjacency conditions of timing are satisfied or they are legal, okay? The timing is legal. So that's pretty straightforward for the second part. So the last part, we make sure every tile, every cell is 
covered by exactly one tile using conjunctive normal form formula. Okay, so this part, okay, we break it into two. So this is means that for now to make this to be true, okay. So that means for all i and j, and uh, you could for 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 each cell you must have at least one tile because uh, for this to be true. But here we could have more than one tile to go into a particular location. The next one just indicates that you cannot have more than one tiles to go in a location. So it means that when you when k is not equal to k prime, you cannot place both of them on the same location. So then you conjunct, uh, you, you, you multiply, right? So you take a conjunction of these two. So that means that phi three is equal to one if and only if uh, each cell in the square is covered by exactly one tile. So then you put all of these together, that means that uh, if every cell is covered by one tile, uh, that means uh, I have a choose assignment to make these variable true. So, so, and also they, they satisfy horizontal and vertical uh, timing, and they satisfy the initial sequence of tiles. Okay, so. So the reduction then is done. So if you can do this in 1972, uh, then you got yourself a Turing award. Unfortunately, of course, uh, for us to learn this, is, it would be a lot easier. Uh, the, the much difficult part is to come up with this understanding, right? So formulate the problem and you, if you were the first one to to uh, start uh, to establish this, that is the most in, that's the most significant part. But then we are learning this now. So uh, after so many years, uh, people have looked at these things, and uh, finally, I I can present this uh, much simpler proof to you. Okay. Oh, by the way, this pool uh, was mine. Okay, so I uh, I study average a case NP completeness, and then I use I find that using this proof was a lot easier. All right, so uh, we already mentioned this. So next, we're going to see uh, another uh, problem, which was due to uh, carp. Richard Cup. Okay, so we're going to call them Cup theorem. But uh, so after um, after SAT, okay. Now at that time, of course, in America, they didn't know bound timing. Uh, they didn't know Levin's work. So at that time, uh, then there was a professor at UC Berkeley called Rich, uh, named Richard Cup. So he further looked at uh, these MP complete problems. And then he came up uh, a list of uh, problems, uh, the initial six problems. So three SAD is one of them. So we could call them Cobb theorem. So uh, the reason I use these three MP complete problems as our initial set of natural MP complete problems is that I, I can bring in the bring in the work by the three most uh, important people uh, who started this uh, study in 1970s. And Cobb later was awarded Turing Award too uh, because of this work and some others. Uh, unfortunately, Levin didn't get that award because he was in Russia. Uh, now he was at BU, okay. Now he is at BU. All right. Um, 
So what is a 3SAT? Right. So this is a restricted form of SAT in the sense that each clause has exactly three literals. Okay, so that's three SAT. So again, the question is, you are given a uh, three CNF, okay? That means each clause has exactly three literals. So you wanna know whether this formula, three CNF formula phi is satisfiable. Okay, so this is MP complete. Now there's an interesting thing here I would like to mention. If you simply look at two SAT, that means each literal has two, uh, each clause has two literal, it is in P. Okay, so when you look at three SAT, then suddenly this difficulty is jumps high, so that becomes NP complete. Okay, so people try to understand why this is the case and such a case is called transition phase. Okay, so this is a very interesting natural phenomenon. So why when you have two SAT is in P, when you just increase one more literal in each clause, it becomes NP complete. So, the difficulty is uh, much higher. So still, we don't quite understand why this is the case. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm sure that uh, people as, uh, in the future at some time will have a better understanding on this. Anyway, so let's look at this proof. Again, this proof is not presented in your textbook. Okay, so I present a different proof, which I think is much easier uh, than the one in your book. Okay, so now let's see it. All right. So it's only one page proof, basically. Uh, so what we are going to do is to reduce a conjunctive normal form formula uh, to three CNF. That means we're going to reduce SAT to three SAT. Okay. So the trick that uh, in this proof is that we are going to uh, introduce three new variables, y1, y2, and y3. This new means that they are not the original variables in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, the, uh, instance of SAT. So they are not there. So it's a new. So these three new variables, I'm going to immediately include seven clauses, seven, three, uh, CNF clauses. Each clause has exactly three literals. So as you can see here, uh, it is just all the possible cases. So this is one 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 zero down to zero one zero, except or or. Except this. So then the good thing about this, now this is important, is that uh, these, all of these seven new clauses are true if and only if, okay, you have to set all of them to be true. Okay, Y1, Y2, Y3 to be true, okay. All right, so that is, so that's why we cannot include this all, all of these because if you, if you include this, then you don't have this. So that's what I want because it makes things easier. So now we are gonna look at each clause in, uh, in F, okay? So for this clause, we, we are looking, we're gonna look at these cases, right? So it may, it contains one little row, two little rows, three little rows, four little rows, and so on. So then we are going to look at each case and, and then reduce each 
clause into a three CNF clauses. So into a, a set of three CNF clauses. Okay, so now let's look at how it's going to be done. So now we're gonna look at a clause. So let C be a general clause. So it can contains, consists of K literals and we call them Z1, Z0 up to ZK. Okay, so then we will replace C, replace this clause by a set of three clauses. Okay, so such that C is true even only if every clause in that set is true. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So for case one is simple because uh, uh, a clause Z1, right, can just be replaced by this three clause uh, because we know that we have these clauses here, which us, you make them to true even only if you assign Y1, Y2, Y3 to be true. So that means these are false. So that means that this is equivalent to Z1, likewise, when K is equal to two, this is equivalent to Z1 and Z1 or Z2. And when K is equal to three, you don't need to do anything. And then when K is equal to four, this is what we're gonna do. So we introduce a, again, another new variable. Let's call it YC. So C is the name of the cross. And replace C by the following three crosses. Z1, Z2, U1, Z3, Z4, negation U1, and then uh, negation Z3, U1, negation Y1. Now remember Y1 is always set to one. So this is always zero. This is always zero. And then Z4, indication Z4, U1. So now you, you look at this, doesn't, uh, why we look at this? The reason here is that <clears throat> uh, we want to use this U, uh, variable U1 to represent a cross Z3 plus Z4. Okay, um, so as you can see here, originally we have Z1, Z2, Z3, Z4. Now I'm going to use U to represent Z3 and Z4. That's what we have here. Okay, then, then, uh, <clears throat> The Z3 and Z4 is, uh, when we appear here, then we can put a negation U1 there. So that means that now say, um, uh, this part, right? Now this part represents that. So the last, so these three parts, three uh, clauses represent uh, Z3 and Z4. Okay, so it, it, as you can see here, if one of these is true, you can set this U1 to, uh, to, to one, right? So U1 to one, so that makes this true and that makes that true, okay? So that's what it is. Okay, so this is the only hard case. Uh, and then for K greater than four, we can simply use this similar construction of K equal to four to first reduce the, the size of the clauses to four and then reduce it to three. Similarly for K, uh, for any k greater than four, right? It, it reduces to k minus one and then k minus two until you go down to three, okay? So that you can use a induction uh, for doing it. So that is uh, one page proof. And as I said, uh, Carr published a paper that 
contains six um, MP complete problems, and some of those we're going to see uh, later. But S three S eighty is one of those, and then uh, because three S eighty has this interesting thing that uh, two S eighty is a P is easy, and three S eighty suddenly becomes hard. Okay, so that's a that's a natural phenomenon that we don't know much about yet. Still, okay, people try to understand. It. All right. Um, with this, I'm going to end this first part of MP complete uh, uh, slides. And then next, we're going to see additional MP complete problems. Uh, they are due to carp. So before we do that, do you have any question for me? Okay, so now let me stop this. Oh, we just start a new, start a new. Okay, so we're gonna start additional MP complete problems. Okay, so let me uh, uh, go back a little. So we began with a bounded hoarding problem. So and show that bounded hoarding problem is MP complete, but that problem is not natural. Okay, it's not a natural problem. Although we were familiar with hoarding problem from the study of computability. So then we look at the first natural problem in our course, which is called bounded tiling, which was first studied by Levin, and that was proven MP complete. And then we look at uh, SAT. Okay, so that is a that was the first one known in the West, but not the first one known in the, in the, in the other part of the world. And but uh, because, because of this SAT and because of CARB later on, identify more MP complete problems and people then wonder how many MP complete problems there are in practice or in applications. So it turns out that uh, there are uh, several years, immediately several years after that, several hundred MP complete problems are proven in different areas. Okay, and then now, okay, after this year, after this, what, uh, 60, so 50 some years, right? After 50 some years, now there have been thousands of MP complete problems that have been identified in every area related to computing. Okay, so anything that you would need to come up with algorithms you can think of, uh, you have is you have MP complete problems. Okay. So here now is the first word, is, uh, first sentence is interesting for reasons that are not well understood. Most natural occurring MP problems are known either to be in P, which means you can find a deterministic polynomial time Turing machines to solve it, or they are MP complete, right? So, so either P or MP complete. Well, there are some problems that are still in sort of, we don't know they are either, they are in P, but we also don't know whether they are MP complete, but they are MP problems. Okay, so there are, there are a few of those. But for most part, they are either in P or MP complete. 
Okay, so as I said, we're going to study more uh, techniques to show some problems to be and be complete. And uh, the study for this is just uh, for the future, if you come up with, because of this, because of this, right? Uh, they are either MP or they are MP complete. So that means that if you ever ask, say you are present, you're presented a problem and you are asked to show or come up with an efficient algorithm and then you fail, right? So despite hard effort, you still couldn't find it. Then you should think about that probably is MP complete. And once you suspect that is MP complete, then you have to prove it. Okay, you cannot just say, or oh, I suspect that it is NP complete. So you gotta present the proof to your boss and saying, look, uh, you asked me to prove this problem to be NP, but now I prove it's NP complete. So that means it's unlikely that you can, we can do this in P. We, we can prove, we, we can find an efficient algorithm. Okay, so that is, uh, that is the reasons that we want to see some other proving techniques in case that you will ever need it. If you do a PhD study uh, related to algor uh, involving algorithms, okay, uh, either in network, in uh, different areas, right? As long as you have to come up with uh, some algorithm involving algorithms. So this is unlike, uh, this is likely to appear. So you, um, Either your problems have been proven and be complete by others, or you have to prove new problems to be and be complete. Okay, so uh, so now let's look at some of these techniques. So uh, <clears throat> we'll start from CSAT following. Uh, Cops footprints. So we are, we're gonna we're gonna our footsteps, right? So we're gonna look at start from CSA, CSAT because CSAT has a very good structure. In it. Every clause has exact takes exactly three literals. So when we construct a polynomial time reduction from CSAT to a new language, let's call it L or new new problem, decision problem L. We look for structures in L, and this structure we're we're going to call it gadgets. Sometimes we call it call it handles. Okay, so we look for structures in L, also known as gadgets, that can simulate the variables and clauses in Boolean formulas. Okay, or basically what we are going to do as uh, earlier we. We, when we talk about 3SAT, we reduce 3SAT to click. So in that construction, we actually construct a graph. And then uh, in that graph, these, uh, uh, each of the clicks will, so, so, so I don't know if you will still remember that construction. Maybe I can briefly mention it here. Um, so, which really means that each clause you you have a, a node for each literal, but within a clause you don't make connection. Only, you make connection only uh, cross different clauses when they are not contradicting each other. Okay, so for instance, if this is x i. This is xj or xj bar as long as j is not equal to i, which is in different clause, then you can make a connection there. Okay. <clears throat> so then depending how many clauses you have, and that forms a click of that size. So that's what we did earlier. Okay, so then hence we know click is MP complete. So we already saw, now this is the fifth MP complete problems that now we know. So next we are going to look at uh, a problem called vertex cover. 
Okay, so what is this? So um, <clears throat> it comes from the following thing. Let's say you are given a graph, G, and, and then you look at these edges, right? So in this graph. So what I'm gonna do here is that, okay, I want to look. So for instance, uh, this node covers, now this node, so these, these two edges are incident to this node. So that, and on the other hand, we can say that this node covers these two edges. Okay, so, so then this node or that node cover this edge. So what I want to do here is that I want to find a set of nodes that cover every edge. Then of course, uh, there's a trivial solution. You just make, you just collect all the, all the nodes, obviously it is a vertex cover. So that means to make things interesting it is that I want to make the smallest number of nodes that cover all the edges, okay? So so that's a minimization problem. And that's what people are interested in uh, reality, in practice. However, that's not a decision problem. How do we convert this to a decision problem? And that's easy. So we just introduce a parameter K. So we're gonna say that uh, it has a uh, <clears throat> K no vertex cover if this is a set of nodes, the number of nodes in that set is at most k, right? So that, so you want k to be as small as possible. So then you convert a minimization problem to a decision uh, problem. So now let's look at what this cover. So you are given now a graph G and a parameter k represents number k. And this instance of vertex cover is positive if G, so this graph G has a, a vertex cover of size at most K and that's called K no vertex cover. And this problem is empty complete. Okay. Uh, Okay, so now let's see how we prove it. So the, for the variable uh, gadget, so because we want to find a structure. So for the variable part, we look for a structure in G because we want to uh, reduce three SAT to vertex cover. Let's call it VC. So then you are given a Boolean formula in three C and F, and I want to construct a graph. So that graph, of course, uh, we need to use nodes to represent variables and uh, use edges to represent uh, relations between uh, crosses, right? So that's, but how we can come up with a meaningful construction that relies on our understanding of the problem. So now that means that we need to, to specify some kind of gadget, okay? In other words, specify some kind of a structure. When we say we look for a structure in G that we really, we really don't have a G, but we construct a G. So that means that we want this G to have such a structure. Okay, so, so that's what we mean by we look for a structure G. Again, we, we are constructing a G and we want our construction to have this property or to have this structure or to have this gadget. So this, this structure can participate in the vertex cover in two possible ways, corresponding to the two possible choose assignments to the variable, right? So one is zero, the other one is one. 
All right, the variable gadget contains two nodes of an edge. So that means uh, we are going, so for each variable, we're going to use two nodes and an edge. Okay, so one of these nodes must appear in the vertex cover. All right, so then we arbitrarily associate true and false with these two nodes. So that means now for each variable in an instance of as 3SAT, we are going to construct an edge. Okay. All right, so now let's move on. So now that's for variable. And then uh, you are given a 3CNF formula. So that means they have cross. So then we're going to look for structure or we need a have some, we want this construction of graph to have a structure that represents crosses. So that means that we look for the structure that induces the vertex cover to include nodes in the variable gadgets, corresponding to at least one true literal in the cross. Now that's, that's what we want, right? <clears throat> So the gadget contains three nodes and additional edges so that any vertex cover must include at least two of the nodes or possibly all three. Only two nodes would be required if one of the variable gadgets nodes helps by covering an edge. As would happen if the associated literal satisfy that cross. Otherwise, three nodes would be required, okay? so. So of course, uh, these are just the uh, reasoning behind the construction. So next, let's look at an example. Uh, examples always make things that look more difficult easier. Uh, as I said, looking at picture, a picture words of thousand words, right? So now let's say I have, now because we want to reduce 3SAT to vertex cover. So what we are given, we begin, we construct a reduction. So that means the input to that reduction is a 3CNF formula. So let's say I have the following 3CNF formula. Okay, so then we, so given the formula, we are going to construct a graph G and a parameter K. Okay, so that means my reduction, my reduction F, We'll map this into a instance of vertex cover. Okay, so that's what is a reduction is. So in this example, uh, I have <clears throat> we'll set k to be eight. Okay, and then we'll go back here. Do we say? So we choose K so that the saw after vertex cover has one node per variable gadget and two nodes per cross gadget. Okay, so one node for, has one node per variable gadget. So how many node, how many uh, variable gadget in this formula and then two nodes so now let's look at this, I'm going back here. Okay. Yeah. All right. We are lined up. All right. 
So we have three clauses and uh, <clears throat> uh, we have three, we have two variables in this case. So, so that means that we have two plus two times three, that's eight. Okay, so that is eight. K is eight. Okay, so, uh, so again, in this fo uh, formula, we have two variables, X1 and X2, and we have three crosses. So how do we determine K? K, now remember, that we use one node for one variable, two nodes for one clause. So, so that's A in total. So here is how we construct this. Uh, so first look at each clause. So this is one clause. This is another, the second clause, right? So there's X1, X2, X, X1, X1, X2 x1 bar, x2 bar, x2 bar, so we have this. And then x1 bar, x2, x2, so this is the cross. Now, within each cross, we have this connection. So they all connected. And then between, uh, so outside of this cross, so here uh, I have, See, I have this particular variable. For each variable, I'm going to have an edge, right? So X1, so remember for each variable, I need an edge so that uh, one of those will be assigned true, the other one will be assigned false. So, so I have two variables, so this is one of those, and this is another one. So X2, I have X2, X2 barred. Okay. So then we were going to make connection of these, uh, these components. So X1 will go, so X1 will go to X1, X2 goes to X2, right? So there's X1 go there, X2 go there. There is, uh, so there is an X2 here go there. And this X2 go there. And then for X1 bar, look at X1 bar here. Okay, here's one, here's another one. So go there. And uh, so, and then for S2 bar, so we get this and get that. So that's how we construct this. So construction. Once people figure it one, once people figure it out, when we look at this, we just verify and say, oh. This makes sense, right? Okay, then we're gonna show that uh, this uh, instance is positive instance of the, this Boolean formula is a positive instance if and only if this graph G and this instance G comma K uh, has a vertex, has a K node vertex cover, which then uh, you can, you can imagine that uh, uh, this node, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay. So now let's look at this. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna show that phi is satisfiable if and only if G has a vertex cover with K nodes. So that means we first assume that phi is satisfiable with a satisfying assignment. Okay, so then, we, then, we're gonna, then we're gonna look at this. So we first put the nodes of the variable gadgets that correspond to the true literals in the assignment into the vertex cover. Then, okay, now this is the first part. Okay, so we, put the nodes of the variable gadgets. 
So variable gadget in this example, so this is a variable gadget. Okay, we are going to put uh, S1, S2. Okay, uh, in the assignment. So that corresponds to the, uh, okay, so my time is up for the first half. So I'm gonna stop here. And we take a 15 minute recess and we come back at eight. Let me stop the recording. Oh, hi everyone. So uh, let's start our second section. Um, so before we start, do you have any uh, question that you may want to ask at this time. Okay, so, so now we continue our discussion on this reduction from 3SAT to vertex cover. So let me refresh your memory about this construction. So um, the construction is that for each variable, now we use xi. So for each variable, let's call it xi. We have for each variable xi. We are going to, now remember, what we're going to do here is that we want a reduction that maps this instance of a 3SAT, instance of 3SAT to an instance of vertex cover, the decision version of vertex cover. So this is K. So that's what we want. So. So let's say xi is a variable of the formula that you are given. So for this, let me just remove this here and then write it down. For each xi, I'm going to make a node, uh, make two nodes, one is xi, the other one is xi bar. And then we're gonna make an edge. So this is, this is called variable gadget. Variable gadget. Okay, and then for each clause, so let's say for each clause, let's say this is a, um, this is cross, we can just say L. Let's maybe just use L1, uh, L2, L3 for each cross. Okay, I'm going to make a cross gadget. So that is just a triangle. Now we need a we need to have this picture in our head that will make that will make things easier when we explain. So this will be L one, L two, L three. They are all connected, and this is called uh, uh, clause gadget. Okay, then between a variable, a variable gadget and cross gadget, we need to make some connection. So the way to make it is for each clause. So you look at this literal, if this literal and this literal is the same. So because we have, so this is either a variable itself or negation. So we can just make 
a connection to the corresponding variable or co corresponding negation of the variable. That's how uh, this uh, graph is constructed. Then we are going to uh, let k be the number of uh, variable gadget plus two times the number of clause gadget. Okay, so that what is k is. Okay, so now let's look at this concrete example. So we have five, which has three clauses and two variables. So that, so this is two variables, x1 and x2. So we get a variable gadget, x1, x1 bar and connect it and connect these two. And the second variable we connect, uh, we make x2 and x2 bar and, uh, and connect them. And then we have a three uh, clauses. So we, then we have a three clause gadgets. Okay, so, so whatever appears in there will be the the label of your notes, whatever literals appear in each clause will be the label for the nodes in a clause gadget. And they are all connected within the clause gadget. So in between variable gadget and clause gadget, you are going to make a connection. So X1, so this is X1, X1 goes to X1, right? So you go X1 goes to X1. And this X2, you go to X2. So that's for, that's for the first cross gadget. The second X1 bar goes to X1 bar. And then X2 bar goes to X2 bars. The third cross gadget, look at S1 bar. So S1 bar then goes to X1 bar. X2 here goes to X2. And this is also X2, so you go to X2. So that's how uh, uh, this, uh, instance for BC is constructed. So next we need to show that if phi, if this variable is satisfiable under a choose assignment, then we are going to construct a, based on that choose assignment, on this graph, we are going to construct a K node of vertex cover. So how do we do that? So because each clause is set true, right? So each clause is set true, true, true. So at least one of the literal is set true. That we know, right? So then we look at this, uh, for instance, if this X1 is set true, X2 bar is set true. So corresponding to the literal, we got X1, and then we got X2 bar. So we're going to place these two node into uh, a vertex cover. So that is the first thing. And then we are going to look at each clause. Okay. So for each clause, uh, so for each clause, we're going to set the, the, the remaining two um, so, so for, for each clause, we know that it, it is true, right? It is true, it is true, it is true, okay? So we just pick two, two uh, in, the, in the vertex cover, okay? So now let's look at, let's look at, Okay, so we talk about the variable gadget. So this part is done. And then, we will put, okay, so uh, two, we will put two, now for cross gadget, we will put two from each cross gadget into the vertex cover. What are those two? Uh, because we know that there is at least one literal to be true in each clause. 
Okay, we just, if there's only one, we just pick that one. Then the, the, the remaining two will be placed into the vertex cover. If there are more than one verb, uh, literals that's set true, we just pick one. And then the, the remaining two will be placed into the vertex cover. Okay, so, um, so this is in, in general, in this case, we just say a literal, you have L1, L2, L3. So each clause is set true. Then we have three cases. One case is that only one literal is set true. The other case is two of them is set, are set true. And then the third case will be three of them is set true, right? So either case, we just need to pick one. Let's say we just pick L1. Now let's say in all cases, L1s are set true. So we just say, okay, we pick L1 and then place L1 and L3 into the <clears throat> into VC, into the vertex cover. So this way we have, uh, so the, the, the set of nodes in this vertex, in, in, this, in, in, in the set we constructed has exactly K nodes. And then we're going to show that each edge is covered by at least one node in this, uh, in this set of nodes. So then we look at the, we look at, so we have three different types of edges. One is inside a variable gadget. Remember inside a variable gadget, because one of these, so exactly one of these nodes will be, exactly one of these nodes is chosen. So that means this edge is always covered. And then remaining, I'm sorry, for the, for the uh, cross gadget, you, uh, the gadget, you choose two nodes in the vertex cover. So no, no matter which two you choose, it always cover all the edges, okay? And then we also know that in between variable gadget and the uh, cross gadget, so, so if this literal is the same as this, and that is a set true, then of course uh, these nodes, uh, so let's say I have XI here, and uh, SI is a set true, okay, then, then because I put SI into the vertex cover, so this edge, all the other edges that contains XI from other cross, from other cross gadgets will be covered because this, this is connected, right? Then if this is a, uh, say uh, in between, right? So let's say XI is not chosen instead of, instead the XI bar is chosen. Okay, so now <clears throat> that's, so that's the literal set to true. So that means inside this one is X I bar is chosen. Uh, we, we, so of course we have this assumption that X I and X I bar do not contain in the same cross because if it does, that cross is always true, then you can remove it, right? So they don't appear at the same time in, this, in, the, in the same cross. Okay, they don't, uh, do not appear in the same cross because if they do, that cross is always true, then you can remove it. Uh, that doesn't affect the satisfiability of the formula. <clears throat> okay, so if this is chosen, now let's go back to this. If this is chosen, so that means that this in the clause, this is set true. And if it's set true, let's look at the clause, okay? 
And uh, uh, we know if we, it must contains the SI bar. So that, that the SI bar now is, uh, is covered. We know that it doesn't contain XI, they cannot do at the same time. So, but then let's say what is SJ, okay. So uh, remember one of these, uh, so this, S, this SJ, um, if it's a force, okay. So in other words, this XJ is not chosen to, to be true. Okay, so that means that uh, it will connect. Let's see, we are going to get uh, somewhere SJ. And then we got XJ bar now. X, so XJ is not chosen to be true. That means XJ bar has to be chosen, has to be true. So in that case, we know XJ is connected to this. Okay, and uh, it's not chosen. That means this one has to be put into VC. So that means that uh, this edge is covered. And, and it appears in other crosses as J because this is not chosen. So that means this one has to be put into the VC also. So that means that this is also covered, okay? So that means that uh, if I have a satisfying assignment, choose assignment for phi, then I have a K vertex cover. So that's one direction. And the opposite direction is a similar. Okay, so in other words, if you have, okay, let's look at, uh, In the opposite direction, if you have a K vertex cover, so first we know that each variable gadget, exactly one node uh, is, uh, should be in the uh, cover. And uh, every, uh, because, and then every uh, uh, cross gadget, you must have, a, you must have a two nodes, okay, contained in it in order to cover those three edges. Okay, so, so you have a K vertex cover, whatever in the vertex cover, the corresponding literals will just be set true. That will make the, uh, the formula uh, to be true. Okay, so, so that is uh, COPS. Another, that's one of the initial problems studied by COP. Okay, so the next one is more involved. So we are going to uh, spend some time. Then once that is done, then we're gonna stop. And then uh, we, the rest of it will be covered by, uh, will be covered after Thanksgiving, right? Because too many proofs in one night, uh, it's challenging, right? It's challenging our ability. So we just do one more. So let me uh, uh, go back a little. So today we're going to, we have a look at uh, SAT, 3SAT, click, and VC. So these are MP complete, okay. And the the roadmap so draw a roadmap here before we start this uh, Hamiltonian cycle problem. The roadmap. So we. We reduce on the timing to SAT. 
And then we reduce SAT to three SAT. And then we reduce three SAT to click. Okay, so, so the reduction, we did that reduction last time. And today we, uh, we show that we can reduce 3S80 to VC vertex cover. And then the, the last one we, we're gonna see today is Hamiltonian cycle. So we're gonna reduce 3S80 to HC. Okay, so that is the, so the roadmap. So this is the reduction. So let me put that. Okay, or we just use arrow here. This arrow representing reduction direction. Okay, so this arrow means reduction direction. Okay, and then we are gonna add some more here. Uh, some more, so we have, so after HEC, we have two more MP complete problems we would like to talk about that are in your textbook also. And uh, so, so this part is not in your textbook. Okay, so it's in the handout, but not in your, it's in my uh, slides, but not in the textbook, but rest of the parts will be in your, are in your textbook. Okay, so this is in textbook, not in textbook. So these in textbook. So this is the roadmap. All right, so now let's look at this thing. Okay, so the next problem is called the directed Hamiltonian path. Uh, let's see. So let me change my, so we call it the uh, ham path. Okay. Let me <clears throat> change my roadmap a little. So we call it hand pass. Yeah, this roadmap. Uh, if you look at different textbooks, this roadmap could be different, but these are classic problems. So we call it hand pass. Okay. Uh, these are all classic because they were in the initial set of MP complete problems uh, discovered by Richard Karp.
Okay. For some reason. All right. <clears throat> uh, so let's uh, just refresh our mind. What is a uh, uh, hemp uh, Hamiltonian pass is? So, so this is a directed graph. Okay, so this is a directed graph. So what we want is to find a uh, a path starting from one node uh, so let me just start from here so you are given a directed graph Okay, so what we want to find is a path. Want to find, so let's call it G. Want to know. Okay, if there is a, there is a path that Starts from a node. Okay. Go through every other node exactly once. So and go through every other node. Exactly once. Uh, maybe just say every node. Okay, so it goes through every node exactly once. Okay, so then we put all the positive instances of G into a set, and that set is called hand pass. Okay, so that means that given a directed graph, I want to know whether this graph contains a Hamiltonian path is empty complete. Okay, so this is what we want to establish. Then we're going to reduce 3SAT to hand path. And this construction is much more involved. Okay, so uh, we have to give a lot of credits to Richard Carr because he was the first person who uh, made this happen, made this construction, made this construction. All right, so and which is rather involved. All right. Okay, look at the title. Directed Hamiltonian pass is MP complete. So we are going to reduce 3SAD because uh, so we're going to so the direction here is that we're going to show 3SAT is polynomial time. Uh, reducible to hand pass. Okay. So that means that we follow the same uh, same uh, framework. So you are given a 3CNF formula. Follow the same framework as we proving as we prove that VC is FP complete. So you are you are given a 3CNF formula. We want to construct a graph such that uh, <clears throat> the 3CNF formula has a 
uh, is a positive instance, that means it's satisfiable if and only if that graph we constructed has a Hamiltonian pass. Okay, so that's what the, that's the direction we want to go. So the graph contains gadgets that mimic variables and clauses as before, as uh, the uh, as the proof that shows that VC is MP complete. So again, we have variable gadgets. So the variable gadget here is a diamond structure. Okay, so uh, that can be traversed in either of two ways, corresponding to the two choose settings. Okay, so uh, the cross gadget, well, we got two types of gadgets here. The cross gadget is a node, just a just one node. Okay, so ensuring that the path goes through each cross gadget corresponds to ensuring that each clause is satisfied in the satisfying assignment. Okay, so this is what we want. Now, again, it's better just to look at an example <clears throat> or at least look at pictures. So in here, we're gonna give a general picture because that's, what, that's, the, that's the proof itself. So once you, once you understand this, uh, pi these pictures, then the rest of it is just describe that picture in words and that will be your proof. So, so the, the, the important part here is that uh, we look at the construction and we, um, from that construction, then we will see that indeed CSAD is reducible to this, uh, uh, to hand path. So it's a general case. So that means now we look at a general formula. So that contains uh, in here, we have K clauses, okay? And each clause, uh, we're gonna write uh, each clause is, the I's clause is AI dis disjunction BI disjunction CI. This A, B, and C, B, uh, they are literals, okay, either xi or xi bar. Okay, so, and this, let's say uh, this formula phi has L variables, okay, and k clauses, L variables and k clauses. So that's what we have now. From these k clauses and L variables, we're going to construct a graph, a directed graph. Okay, so that looks like the following. So each variable, where uh, variable is a symbol, just one variable, but, but we're, we're gonna look, we're gonna use something like this to represent a variable. Okay, so now what's in this? Okay, inside of these node, inside this, now we call this a diamond thing. Now this is a one component. So for each XI, I am constructing this subgraph, okay? So uh, it's called a diamond uh, structure or diamond shaped structure. Okay, so each of these on this horizontal ones, they represent the, the, uh, the K crosses. So we have K crosses and each cross is separated by a node that's called a separator. So for instance, we got now, so these diamond shaped nodes is not going to be considered as a separator. So we have a separator. So this, this represents C1, this is a separator represents C2 and so on, right? So that's 
basically that's what this construction is. And uh, from here, you can go to the left. You can you, you go to this, you go to that. From that, you go to the next variable. So all these variables are lined up. So let's say this xi and then xi plus one, just lined up like that. And then uh, you, so for this horizontal thing, you get k crosses plus uh, separators you have, and then plus these nodes, okay? Uh, so that's what is construction is. So let's look at, uh, well, the reason we want to go through this proof is just to get to, uh, to get some ideas how a MP complete this proof could could entail, right? So this is a fairly complicated proof, but I have seen much more complicated proof than this. Okay, as a matter of fact, that uh, uh, sometimes a proof may, uh, may contain more than 10 pages for just a completeness proof. Okay, so. Okay, so now this is what we are having. So we have K crosses, we have L variables. So that means we have L diamond shaped structure subgraphs. Each of these will, uh, inside each diamond shape, inside each diamond is a horizontal one is exactly the same. So this is C1, C1, C1 separator. And then followed by the separator, then followed by C2, right? So this is inside each, you got C1, you, sorry, so the direction is this way. So inside each diamond, you have a separator and then this is the, this is just the, the boundary node in your diamond. Okay, so this is another separator. And then this is your C2, represents C2. So follow this. And then we get separator. And then CJ. Okay. And then you keep doing until you got CK. And then you have the separator and then the boundary knot. Okay, so that's inside of this diamond. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So now we take a closer look. Uh, so this is C1 separator, separator C2, right? So um, that's how we connect these things. The horizontal row, now how many nodes it contains? Okay. Um, so for each, for each, uh, Sorry, for each cross, actually it has two nodes. So I, uh, I, sh I should uh, go back here instead of one. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think I removed it, right? Can I remove it? Can do. So C1 here has two nodes. Yeah, that's important, we need two nodes. Okay, so um, maybe I'm gonna just remove this. Okay, just remove this. 
Now each of these has, for each cross I use two nodes represented. For each cross I use two nodes represented. So this is two nodes for CJ. So this is two nodes, two nodes. And not CK is two nodes, and then there's a separator and the boundaries. So this is CK. All right. So that's what it is. Okay. <clears throat> So now, how many nodes in this? Well, uh, you, you can, uh, so the counting is not that important now, except these boundary nodes. Uh, we got K crosses, then we have each cross is a separator. So you got, you got K plus one separators. So that means the three K altogether, you got three K plus one nodes now, except the boundary nodes. Okay, so we don't count this. 3K plus one doesn't count this. Okay, so. <clears throat> so that's what it is. All right, so now we are going to make a node for each CJ outside of this diamond chain. Okay, so that's what this thing here. Back here. So, so this is a graph. Now, this is a diamond chain, chain of diamonds. And then these K nodes, each node represents uh, each of these represent a uh, a cross. And then we need to make connection. Uh, for instance, C1, we got, we got C1 here, so they have to make connections. So that's how this graph is constructed. So now let's look at. Uh, so let's look at this. All right, so we corresponding to CJ. Okay. <clears throat> so what we do we do is that we make a left, now horizontally we got left and right, so two nodes for CJ. So this going to, going out to CJ and CJ going in. Now we have lots of these. Now for each diamond, you are going to do the same. Okay, so that's basically what the construction is. So if now that's an XJ appears in CJ. Now, if an XJ bar appears in CJ, you are going to reverse this. You are going to reverse this edges. Now, let me go back. So when we go back, so is that if XJ is in, so if XI is in CJ. Now, once again, XI and XI bar will not appear in the same cross because if they do, that cross is always true, then you can remove them. Okay, so, so this is if XJ, XI is in CJ, then you have this. So we, we make this going out from the left and going in to the right. And the next case is when XI bar is in CJ. So then the left is, uh, so we, we go from CJ to the left, right? So this is opposite direction. And then from the right, so we clear this up. Okay, so it's just the opposite way. So this opposite way can can help us to tell which uh, which type of literal is in CJ. 
So that's the construction. Okay, so construction, once people figured it out, when we try, try to study this construction, is not that hard. So the, the hard thing is how they can come up with this construction, right? Okay. So now uh, we'll see how this uh, Hamiltonian path can be made, can be formed if the Boolean formula is satisfiable. <clears throat> so suppose that phi is satisfiable, then uh, we can form a pass from the initial node, from, from the star node S to the, uh, the target node T. So now remember, look at the big picture. This is a star node. This is the target node. So this is the target node. And after, so for instance, if, uh, if uh, S1, if uh, S1 in C1, S2 bar in C1, okay, just look at this first one. So what we're gonna have here is that let me put one more here. So this represents C1 and uh, this represents C1. So what we have is this and that, and then this. in the opposite direction. Okay, so of course each cross uh, contains three little rows, so that means you're gonna have maybe the last one here, we'll say SL is zero. And this will be this. So this is C1. So what we're gonna have here is the left going to C1 and then it's going to this. Okay, and then we move on to C2. Okay, it contains three little rows. Again, we, we do the same thing, okay. So that is what uh, the graph would look like. And then if I have a choose assignment to make each cross true, okay, then we can we can do this like that. So we can zigzag if, uh, let's say X1 is made true. So we can go from here and then go in there and then go there and go back. Okay, once you go back, then you can go over here or now once you go back here, depending on whether x2, so now is x2 bar is in here, so then we can um, zigzag. So that means this time I'm going to, so once I come back here, I'm gonna go this way, I'm gonna go that, and then uh, this time I'm gonna go this way, and and then I go this way and then go back, right? So. So as you can see, depending on whether XI is in CJ or XI is in CJ bar, we just make a zigzag, then you can eventually go down to T. So that is your Hamiltonian path. All right, uh, so you, you, you would need some, uh, some imagination, uh, but we do have like a, a uh, we, we can do, we can actually follow this, uh, idea. So let me just say it again here, right? <clears throat> so in our case, x1, if x1 is xi is in cj, you go to the left. If xi bar is in cj, you go to the right. So in our case, uh, let me use a different color here. So in our case, we start from s, start from s, then we look at, okay, S1 is in C1, okay. Then we're gonna go this way, 
and then travel, travel. Once we get to C1, we're gonna travel out. So cover this C1. And then going back to here. Okay, and then the next one is X2, but X2 bar is in C1. Then we can do is going this, okay, going that, going this way, and then going, 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 going here, and then go there, and then come back. Okay, so then you just look at the next one. Okay, so what it, what, what it would be. And uh, then you can, you can zigzag. And very interesting construction for the first one who thought about this. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Okay, um, so we already explained this. Zigzag. Zigzag or zag zig. Okay, so depend the direction. So is going to left, that's called zigzag. You're going right first, and that's called zag zig. Okay, so uh, for the root, so so if he has a truth assignment, then we can we can travel from S to T going through ordinals exactly works. Okay. <clears throat> so let me do that again, okay? Uh, because we can do that again here. Okay. So assuming, uh, as I said, I have this X1 is in C1, S2 bar. It's in C1. So what I do here is I have a connection. Now this is for C1. This is also for C1. So this is going to the right. And this going to this. And then this going there. And this going there. So, so X1 is in C1 with the zigzag. So do you go this, go that, go that, go that, go that, go that, go there, and then going back. Okay. Uh, but then when you're going back, these nodes has been already covered. So we don't do that. So that means now we will do this first and doing that and then doing that. Okay. So this time then going this way. Okay. And then going that way. Exactly. Okay, so zig, zag, and then zag, zig, and then zig, zag, and zag, zig. So this time, we're going to go here. Okay, and then going there, going that, and then going back. Okay, then we zig, zag again. So you go to the next time, and depending on whether this thing is in, maybe it's going to this, right? So, so you get... Uh, So, uh, so this time, may, let's say this may not be. Uh, so this is you know, the actual thing is a little bit more complicated, but let me let me change this. Let me just say S C two S two bar is in C two. Then this will go. So this is true. Oops. 
Okay, so depending on this variable, then you can, uh, because you are here and you go there and then go there, go there and then go in there. Okay, so that's how you do a Hamiltonian path. Okay, so after you think about it a little bit, then you should be convinced that it will go through. Okay. Now we for the reverse direction. Suppose I have a Hamiltonian pass from S to T. Okay, and uh, how can we find a satisfying truth assignment for uh, the variable? Okay, so um, now let's see this. <clears throat> So if the Hamiltonian pass is normal, that's it goes through the diamonds in order from the top one to the bottom one, except for the detours, uh, we can easily obtain the satisfying assignment. Okay, so, so the construction actually just make it easy to pick up the truth assignment uh, to make it true. So we have several cases, then you can just go through, you can draw um, a, 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 so you go the path, you go through the path and you'll just make that variable or corresponding variable to be, uh, to set it to true, uh, literals to set it true. Okay, so I probably uh, already lost you. So as I said, uh, it's a, it's the right time to start because the next, so we're going to start and we are not going to start a new proof. Uh, instead, you, so I would like you to, uh, to read this through and think about it because uh, probably the more I say here, uh, uh, so, uh, the more I say here, then you may, you may, so, so it's better just to go through this yourself because I already give you the idea and the, the construction. So, uh, so let me just stop here. So without, without going through a new problem. And uh, hopefully I didn't lose you too much. Okay. So any questions? All right. So looking ahead, now this is what we're gonna do. So next week we are not gonna meet, right? So next week is Thanksgiving week. Hopefully you all have a healthy uh, Thanksgiving without getting infected. So uh, you will not get infected as long, as long as you pay attention to to follow all the guidelines, right? So, so after Thanksgiving, uh, let's see what day is it? Let me get it. After Thanksgiving, that will be December the 3rd, okay? Uh, I think the class ends at December the 10th, I think. So that means that December the 3rd after next week, uh, we have some time to, now de depending on whether we have a class on the 10th, I need to check. Otherwise we have only one more week to go which means that I may have to skip the rest of the two empty complete problems and start P space complete problems because I thought you ought, you, you should, you should uh, have some ideas of uh, space complexity. Uh, again, for computer scientists, um, we are sort of like uh, more interested now, 
we cover, we have three sections of this course. We cover finite automata and push down automata. So those are important for compiler designs and also for some of the algorithm designs later that you, you probably will learn. And then in the middle, we look at um, computability, Turing machine stuff, right? But then these Turing machine stuff for computer scientists, we want to use them to study bounded, uh, resource bounded computing. So, so that means that the NP completeness and P space completeness are more relevant to computer scientists. Okay, computability are more relevant to people study uh, from mathematical point of view, uh, what things are computable. They don't really care how long it's going to take, how much, how, uh, how much space it needs to take. They don't really care at that uh, in, in that area. But for us, we do care, right? So we do care about how long and how much space we need in order to finish up a computation. So, so that means MP completeness gives us a upper bound. Uh, well, really gives a uh, give us a lower bound, right? Hopefully, you can you can think of it as a lower bound. This is MP complete. Looks like we require exponential time if p is not equal to np <clears throat> so those are those those are the topics uh, that's relevant to students or to us who study computer science so that's uh, the the rest of the semester and i better stop here Questions? Okay, then I'll see you next week. No, see you the week after next week, right? So next week is Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving. I have a... All right, so thank you everyone. Have a healthy Thanksgiving. Still enjoy your uh, Thanksgiving dinner, but follow the guidelines. Okay, see you on the 3rd of the December. 3rd of December, okay? Bye-bye.